Join us today as we enter a bovine adventure in the heart of a cow. This is the life of an anatomist. Here we have the external view of the heart. Notice the curvature of how it points off to the side. This will be important for directioning later. Now on the top, you'll see these auricles or pouches. Now this is very important. These are like two little pouches that are connected to the atria on the top of the heart. They store some extra blood. Now, if you notice, the heart is actually called right and left opposite to what we see. So that's the left side and this is the right side. It's from the cow's or patient's perspective. Notice there's also a lot of fat on the heart. This is perfectly normal. In fact, your heart has fat too, so don't make fun of it. Now, if you look up here, you'll see that there's a lot of big vessels on the top, and on the bottom you see the chambers, and that's what mostly we're dissecting. This is the aorta, it's very big, and that is going to be the pulmonary trunk with the pulmonary vessels. And if you look on the back, you'll see a, oh, a stamp. Interesting. And you'll see the vasculature surrounding the heart, supplying it with blood, since the heart is a muscle and it does need blood. And it's very fatty, you can see. Using this calf heart as an example, we will dissect the right atrium. Notice how I've positioned the heart so that it is in the correct orientation. From this, we will make sure we make a flap. This incision is going to have three cuts. Notice here, and once we open it to reveal the smooth surface along with the tricuspid valve, you can see with its stringy papillary muscles. Indeed. Now, what's important is you notice that the top superior vena cava is missing, but it is okay. Next, we move forward with the right ventricle. Notice this incision looking very plateau-like. Make sure to be careful when you're cutting the muscular wall. Once you reveal it, you should immediately see some quarter tendine and along some papillary muscles. Now, what's important here is that you notice the surfaces, so make sure you take a deep note on the features of the right ventricle. Skipping the left atrium, we will move directly into the left ventricle. This is a long incision, as you can see here, and you will be able to see the direction of blood flow going towards the aorta to the rest of the body. Incredible. Notice the thick muscular wall of the left ventricle it needs to be pretty tough, and you might guess why, since it goes to the rest of your body. And that's pretty much the right section. Very well done. This is going to be a quick suturing tutorial using a needle driver you can see here. Your facilitator will show you how to hold it properly. Next we will use scissors and of course forceps to help us guide our string and suture. So here you'll notice that the needle is pointing towards the left. Now the part that has the string is going to be on the right. Ah, but where to hold the needle exactly? We'll now be going over that. So a good marker is to go halfway and then half of that towards the string. So basically one fourth from the string. And you're going to grab it at the very tip of your needle holder. So notice here, you're going to grab it at the very tip at a slight angle, and that is going to be a good position. Notice how it's smiling at me. Ha ha! Smile. It is happy to be held. Okay? And I'm again holding it at the very tip of my needle holder. Okay? For the actual suturing, you'll notice that distance is going to be a very important part. So here I mark with my forceps where I'm going to go in. Notice, remember, the suture is going to go in that direction, so I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to note that distance from the edge and come out at that depth from the edge also. So if I go in there, that distance is the same distance I want to come out there. Okay, and I will show you this one more time. Look at that distance right here from that edge. The same distance from that edge right here. That's where I want to emerge with my needle. And you'll see this is very clear once I do it. So notice how I'm going in, I'm supinating my palm, so I'm making sure that it goes through, and the distance that I come out is about equal from the edge. If you notice how I'm turning my wrist, this is very important, this turning motion, otherwise you will bend your needle. And I'm going to go straight through and leave a little bit of string left, just a little bit of string. Okay, and I'm going to do the same direction. I'm going to make sure I align my suture. It's going to go up. Notice how I'm going up, trying to create the same distance and pulling it through, again supinating my palm 
and I'm going to pull it all the way through. Oh, it looks like it got caught a little bit. I'm going to pull that out. Oh, that's a little, oh, there we go. And we've pulled it out. So I'm going to pull my needle all the way through. Notice how I'm not ever touching the needle with my hands. That is a no-no. You do not want to do that. I would leave as little bit of string on the other end as possible. So notice I have a little short piece of string. That's going to be very important for when we make our tie. Really quick, what side is the short string on? On the right side. Yes, well done. Our goal is going to make the right side go to the left side with this first tie. So the very first thing you want to do is make your needle holder parallel to your body. It's like a mountain. It's going to be standing there resolute and not moving. It's going to be your guide. Next, you're going to go over the mountain. Notice how the string is in front of you. You can go over twice that way. Okay, so one more time. You're going to go over the mountain once, twice. Okay, we went over the mountain twice. One more time, over the mountain. One, two, and this is going to be a little tricky keeping that around. You're going to grab the very end of the short part of the string, and now you're going to pull it to the opposite side, so the short string is now on the left side. So you're going to twist your arms when you do that. That may take a little practice. Okay, so notice how again the left string is on, the short string is on the left side. And again, now you're going to make this parallel motion, but this time you're going to go backwards over the mountain only once. Okay, so before we were going in front of the mountain, forgive my camera angle, but before we we're going in front of the mountain, now we're going backwards against the mountain, grabbing the edge of the string again. Okay, oop, I missed it once. And we're going to pull it through. This time the string is going to go back to the opposite side to where we began. And look at that. That is your surgical knot. To continue this stitch, we're going to keep going. Notice how I'm just going through in one motion now instead of going through multiple. The tangerines are a bit tricky, so don't worry if you can't get it all the way through in one go. And we're just going to go down the line this way. So notice I'm going to be using my forceps. I'm not touching the needle with my fingers. Repositioning it. I'm going in, equidistant, coming out, equidistant, making sure I'm from the edge. Same distance. Oh, this tangerine's a bit tricky. It's not letting me get it through. Ah, there we go. And now I'm going to pull it through. And you're just going to keep going down this line. And this will be important for when you put your cow heart back together. So I'm just going to keep going. Here's another example of me doing it. Yes, coming in, coming out. It's really quite meditative. It's a nice sort of way to spend your day. Okay, now to finally stop your line, okay, to close it off, we're going to just keep going as normal. So we're going to go in, and we're going to go out, but instead of completing the loop, notice how I'm leaving a little slack. Okay, so I'm not going all the way through. I'm leaving this little loop still, okay? And the reason why is that is going to be our short string. So you're going to do the same thing as before, with a surgeon's knot, but instead now you're just going to use the loop as your small piece of string. Okay, notice how I've tied it. And now I'm going to go backwards. Oh, it got caught a little, but that's fine. What we're going to do is we're just going to cut. You're just going to slide down, turn a little bit, and snip. And that is all. Well done.